Hello and welcome to week 24 of a 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in the space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk about web gardens in IIS and this applies to both IIS 6 and 7. This is a largely misunderstood feature in IIS, a setting that many system administrators have tried out at various times assuming that it would work and in fact it rarely benefits any website. This is one garden that you don't want to grow. So now I'm speaking to about 98% of the situations here. There are some valid reasons, and actually I'll get into these as we talk about this, but I'm hoping that this is a good launching pad to really understanding some of the performance settings in IIS. But in understanding web gardens more, we can understand the performance tuning in IIS better. First, let me start by explaining what a web garden is. And to do that, I first need to contrast the difference between a web farm and a web garden. So web farm talks about having multiple servers serving up a single site. And you can see in this diagram a request comes in from the internet to the load balancers, which will distribute that across the various different web nodes. Well, that's a web farm. But a web garden, on the other hand, is actually about a request coming in to one server and one app pool, and there will be multiple worker processes for that particular app pool. Let's look at it in action. So web garden is actually set at the app pool, and this is the same in IS6 and 7 and 7.5. And it's set here, and notice it says maximum worker processes. It actually has a category for web garden in IS6. Actually, it looks like this. And right here, notice in the app pool settings in IS6, the web garden here, and it shows the maximum number of worker processes that are allowed for this particular app pool. And in IS7, it's here on the app pool advanced settings, and then the worker processes. And you can see here it actually defaults to 1. And you can see the description still mentions the web garden, although the title doesn't anymore. So by default, this allows just a single worker process. So actually, let's try it out. So in one worker process, and we'll go here to Task Manager, and jump down to our W's. Of course, this is timed out from inactivity here on the server. So now if I refresh it, notice a single worker process has started up. I'll refresh it, let's say, five times here. Notice it's always using the same worker process every time. There's only been one created. Now if I go to the advanced settings and set this to let's say 10 and apply and actually you know what that's why the worker process would have stopped because it's going to tear that down and restart it there and so now if I refresh uh, rapidly back to back and now you can see that it's starting and actually I purposely had to add a 500 millisecond pause to this page otherwise I couldn't refresh fast enough for it to kick off. So you can see this is all just a single app pool. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, all 10 have started here. And you can see some memory overhead has to be duplicated and everything else. So this is what a web garden is. Now the question is, is it an ideal or is it an option for performance tuning? And why and when should you use it? And I've had a lot of debates and discussions about this over time. A lot of people have asked me, well, should we turn on a web garden? And over the years, I've actually experimented many times with web gardens, and virtually every time we realized it wasn't benefiting and we turned it off. So let's look at some pros and cons to really consider why we want a web garden. And then when I'm all done, I want to show some other performance tuning tricks that are actually better than a web garden. So why would we potentially want a web garden? So number one, if you have contention with synchronous concurrent requests, that means requests that aren't smart enough to run multiple back-to-back -back, and it really everything bottles behind a single request. You may have this with PHP and ISAPI mode, you may have it with COM plus applications, classic ASP. There's a few situations there where it may uh, bottle up there and you want to make sure that you're running in multiple worker processes per app pool. And it also serves as a great troubleshooting measure and if you want to just determine hey would more worker processes make a difference let's try it out. Absolutely. Put it in place and see what happens there and then you at least know that there's some contention with concurrent requests. But why would you not want to use it? Let's spend a bit more time on that. And so if we look here, the cons of a web garden, there's a few. One is the memory in process is spread across a lot of different processes. So if you have session state, if you have a dependency on it, which ASP, ASP.NET does heavily, even if you have sticky sessions on the web farm, it's going to do you no good here because it's going to loop the requests will not stick to a web garden instance. And so what you're going to end up doing is going back and forth and you've completely invalidated session state. So um, the solution is to offload it to state server, SQL state, or third party option there. 
but it's usually not always preferred. PHP is a little bit better in that it saves the session state to disk and that will be shared. It doesn't keep it in memory. And the other is some people say, well look at I have tons of memory on my server and I've seen this a lot. I have 12 gigs of RAM on my server and so and my app pool is actually only using 800 meg. So then if I do a whole bunch of worker processes, isn't that going to make it work a lot better in terms of the memory consumption? Well, no. What's going to happen is you just have duplicates of the exact same memory. It benefits you zero in terms of the memory. In fact, it has a lot of waste because you see each of these worker processes, all of that just to run a single page. Now this is tiny. If you have just one or two sites on a server, it's really not going to make much difference. But now if you have dozens of sites in Web Gardens, of course, it's going to be a lot. And if you rely on caching, which so many applications do, then the cache has to be built up on every single one of these. And so, for example, let's say you have to do a database call. The database call is made and then it's cached. Well, that cache buildup has to be performed on every single one of these worker processes. And that may take 10, 15 minutes of the first usage, depending on your application. It takes a while to build that up. It may even take a lot longer yet. And so there's another big disadvantage of the web garden in this situation. Also, your first hit, if you ever do recycle your app pool, and which happens often enough, it's going to take, you have the first hit performance penalty for every single one of those worker processes. And, and also the troubleshooting potentially can be a little bit more difficult too, where all of a sudden you're saying, hey, I don't have just one worker process I'm trying to gain insight into. I have multiple for this exact same instance. So you may say, well, what about CPU? Wouldn't this work great because now you can balance the CPU across multiple worker processes? Well, it doesn't work that way in most situations, and the reason is because each worker process has multiple threads within it. Those threads are able to leverage the different processes already, and so you're going to have no problem leveraging your entire CPU on even a multi, you know, even a 16-core server. Now, there's some defaults, and I'll talk about these later on. Some default to 12, some default to 20 running threads per I.O., but really, it's very rare that you're going to run into any benefit at all by breaking it up, just because the, each process is already meant to do that. Breaking into multiprocesses won't help you there. Again, the memory benefit is virtually never a benefit because you're duplicating the memory anyways if you're using the exact same site. Now, breaking a website into multiple subparts, for example, a subfolder, because of the high memory consumption, that's a different story again, but that's not what we're talking about here. Now, I have heard stories of people saying, hey, they turned on web gardens and drastically made a difference to their application, and that does help, but I'll tell you what is almost always the situation, is most likely the situation in those cases, is that they had single points of contention. So they had something that wasn't multi-threaded. For example, PHP and ISAPI mode would do it. Com plus applications would do it. And where it's not CPU bound, because CPU bound is not going to help you. If you see the CPU is pegged on a server, it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse with web gardens. But if you have a slow running application that's not leveraging the resources, so you're saying my site is slow, but CPU is only using 8%, then you may be a candidate to experimenting with web gardens. But even then, the web garden is really a temporary or a band-aid measure because there's other ways around that. You need to remove those points of contention, and that's the real fix. Web garden's the band-aid. Sure, it's acceptable. You may even leave it in place for a few years. That's fine if it does a trick for you but ideally get rid of those single points of contention. So for example, PHP in ISAPI mode, switch to fast CGI. Completely addresses that. If you have complex bottling behind a single point, look at being more thread safe. Look at being able to make asynchronous calls instead. And if CPU is absolutely pegging the server, it's not going to help you in the slightest to switch to WebGarden because you've already leveraged all the resources on the server and WebGarden doesn't help with that at all. So now the question arises, what other performance measures do you have? And here's a place that I would absolutely start. It's Knowledge Base Article 821268. So remember that, 821268. You can Google that, and there's an excellent article here from Microsoft. And it talks about the various settings you can do. This is .NET related for the most part. Your Max Worker threads and your IO threads. Some various settings here that will make a, a much bigger difference there. And they have some rules of thumb on how many that you want to have per CPU, so you may tweak it on a particular server, and uh, various settings here that will help you. And also at the bottom, there's two other references that are really good, especially this top one, ASP.NET Thread Issue and IS7 and 6. And follow this article as well.
And this article here, again, it talks about the same thing, some decisions that had to be made when IS7 came out, and uh, various settings that need, can be made to tweak. And then actually when uh, Service Pack 3.5 SP1 came out, then they made some more changes that you're able to, in integrated mode only, you're able to set some of these in your actual config file rather than it was in the registry prior to that. So those are settings that you may want to look at if you're looking at contention and you're considering a web garden. But just as a general rule, if you aren't having performance problems, just keep the IS and ASP.NET default performance. For the vast majority of situations, it works great. I've worked it on shared servers, I've worked it on highly available web farms, and the default settings almost never need to be tweaked. Now there are situations I definitely have gone through and done some extensive troubleshooting and we have had to tweak some of these settings but it's really on a case by case basis and it's pretty rare that you need to change it. So there we have it, a web garden that is almost never beneficial but understanding what it is and the purposes for it and where it could potentially help you is very useful and I hope that you found this useful. Thanks for tuning in, hope to see you again next week.